All right, so distance and midpoint formulas, right? So this section, this entire chapter is all formula work. Okay, but the problem with that is that when you guys see formulas, you tend to be like, oh, well, I don't have to pay that close attention. A lot of our formulas, like when we get into ellipses and hyperbolas, they're very, very similar to each other. So the devil is actually in the detail. So you need to be precise and meticulous while you're working through this. So make sure you're following along, please. Distance formula. Um, obviously, it's how we find distance on a graph between two given points, right? So the distance formula is right here. Okay? It's similar to slope formula, right? The issue with this is that when you type it into your calculators, you have to be very, very, very careful as to how you set up your parentheses or else you will get the wrong answer. Okay? Uh, you should have seen it in geometry. So go back to freshman year. And it was there. Okay? So, like I said, you have to be careful when you type this in with uh, your calculators because you have to have a set of parentheses within the radical or else you will leave part of it outside of the square root and that's not good. Okay, so when you type this into a calculator, you'll hit square root and then another parenthesis and then set up your x sub 2 minus x sub 1 close parenthesis square plus parenthesis y sub 2 minus y sub 1 parenthesis squared and then another close parenthesis to end that square root. Okay? So you got to have that double set or else you will get the wrong answer. So let's take a look real quick. What is the distance between negative 3, 5 and 4, negative 1? So this is just like what we did last year with the slope formula, right? Y2, or sorry, X1, X2, wow. X1, Y1, X2, Y2, right? All you're doing here is plugging it in. So what is my X2 value? 4, what is my X1? Negative 3 plus Y sub 2 is negative 1, and y1 is 5. So what happens to the double negative here? It becomes a positive. What's 4 plus 3? 7. What's 7 squared? 49. What's negative 1 take away 5? Negative 6. What's negative 6 quantity squared? 36, right? Do you guys remember in physics, for those of you that have had physics, you always heard him say that distance can't be negative, right? You can move in a negative direction, but you're still in movement. This is why. If you're using distance formula, you can't have a negative because you're square rooting to find your distance, right? So you have to be in constant forward motion. So the distance traveled is always going to be a positive. It's just in a positive direction or a negative direction. Okay, so you can't move in a negative fashion. Everybody okay with that? So what's 49 plus 36? 85, okay, square root of 85, is that going to be a perfect square? No, it's close, right? It's 7 point whatever. So we're going to just leave it as the square root of 85. I'm not going to even worry about reducing it down right now, okay? If you want to write this out as a decimal, uh, it's going to be 7 point, what, what, what is it? Out four decimal? 9, oh, shoot, yeah, 81. I'm stupid. I'm thinking of 64. <laughs> okay, 9 point what? Uh, four decimals, though. Two. And then what's past the nine? Okay, and then past the five? Okay. So point two one nine five. Everybody okay with how I want you to set up distance, yes or no? Is everybody able to type that in in one statement with their calculator and get the right answer out? Oh. Okay, so square root, open parenthesis, and then you just set up four minus negative 3, close parenthesis squared, plus parenthesis negative 1, negative, uh, minus 5. Now, remember on your calculators, a negative button is different than the subtraction button, right? So the negative button is the one that's in parentheses. The subtraction is your regular subtract button. Make sure that you don't get those confused. All right, everybody good with the distance formula? Yeah? Okay, now this is how we actually use it. We use it to identify a triangle. So... For identifying a triangle, we have three kinds of triangles, right? We have a scalene, isosceles, there we go, there we go, isosceles, and equilateral. Okay, so scalene, right? What does a scalene triangle have? 
No equal sides. Cat, what about isosceles? Two equal sides and equilateral. So what we're going to basically be doing here is you're going to find the distance between all three of your points, right? Find the length of all three sides. If none of them match, what would be the triangle type? Scalene, right? If two of them match, what would be the triangle type? Isosceles, if all three of them match, what's your triangle type? Equilateral. Everybody right with that? Back to here. So classifying the triangle. The first thing that I want to do is find the distance. I'm going to call it D1, right? Um, what two points do you want me to find the distance between first? Because I need to find the distance between A and B, B and C, C and A. Okay, so A and B, okay. Distance between A and B. So 6 minus 3 is 3. 4 minus 7 is negative 3, so I get 9 plus 9, so uh, 18, so square root of 18, right? So get your decimal, right? And then type in square root of 18 and see if they're the same decimal. Because your calculators will either spit it out as a decimal or will automatically reduce it, right? Which, if your calculator reduces it, it should be 3 square root of 2. So 3 times 1.414, so you're looking at uh, 12, 3, 4, 12, 3, 4. So it should be like 4.343. Or sorry, 4.2, yeah, uh, 4.242. Okay. So everybody all right with that? Yeah? So that's one done, right? And I need to find my other three sides. So now I need to find the distance between B and C. So you're going to run through that one. All right, 7 minus 2 is 5, squared is 25. 3 minus 1 is 2, squared is 4, 25 plus 4 is 29. So I get the square root of 20 what? X minus X squared plus X minus X squared, and then you square root that. Or sorry, Y minus Y. So 7 minus 2 is 5, right? Squared is 25. 3 minus 1 is 2, squared is 4. So 25 plus 4 is 29, so I get the square root of 29. All right, so everybody good. So, so far, what does this look like? Is this going to be equilateral? No, two sides are different lengths, right? So, so far, it's either scalene or equilateral. The determiner is going to be the last distance. So I need to find the distance between C and A. So, again, 4 minus 2 is what? 2 squared is 4. 6 minus 1. Squared, 25, 4 plus 25 is 29. So how many of the sides match? Two. So this is an isosceles triangle. Everybody okay with that? Yes, no, maybe. Everybody okay on how I found that? Because you're responsible for doing this tonight. So everybody okay with working with distance formula? Yes or no? Okay. Just identify what kind of a triangle it is. Yeah, that is one question. All right. Midpoint formula. Can you guys read that, or do you want me to make it bigger? All right. So midpoint formula is basically just find the average between your X's and your Y's, right? So how do you find the average between two numbers? Add them together, divide by 2. Add your X's, divide by 2, comma, Add your y's divided by 2. Now, the issue here is if you look at the distance formula, it has that big plus sign in the middle, right? Because distance is just a, a single unit. This is the mid what? Point. So your answer is going to come out as a point. It should be an x comma y. Everybody all right with that? Because every year I have people who are like, give me a single number for midpoint. That's mathematically impossible. It has to be a point. Everybody okay with that? Yeah? Now, if you notice, what letter do we use? Got to be careful. Where else do we use M? In, in, in math. Slope, right? But what kind of an M was it for Y equals MX plus B? Little M, right? Little M means slope. Big M means midpoint. So make sure that I can see that it's a capital M. Okay? Big M equals. So if I ask you to find the midpoint here, what do I do? Add the what? Add the X's and then do what? So 
So what's negative 5 plus negative 1? Negative 6 divided by 2? Negative 3, right? So can you see what the other issue is going to be up here? People dropping negs, okay? Make sure that you're maintaining negatives or positives if that's what you should have if you're doing it mentally, okay? What's 1 plus 6? 7 divided by 2, does that reduce? No, so we just keep it as 7 over 2. Here is your midpoint. Yeah? Everybody all right? Yes, no, maybe? Okay, so using midpoint formula to find a perpendicular bisector. So if I gave you this and I wanted to find the perpendicular bisector. So first of all, what does the word bisector mean? Cuts it into two. Is it just two random pieces? Two equal pieces, right? So what point is going to be right at the middle of this line? The what? Midpoint. So let's say it's here. This is going to be your big M, right? Okay, what does the word perpendicular mean? It crosses at a right angle. So I'm going to draw a line in here, and it's got to be a 90 to this line, right? So I need to find the equation of the yellow line. So the first thing that I need to do is find what? Big M, right? Okay, to find the equation of this line, if I have a point, I need to know its slope, right? And what do we know? What's the relationship between the orange line and the yellow line? They're both going to be what? Perpendicular. And what do we know about perpendicular lines? Their slopes are opposite reciprocals, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the midpoint of this line, the orange line. I'm also going to find the slope of the orange line. And this is going to look very similar to what you all did in Chapter 2 last year, okay? So I'm going to find the midpoint of the orange line. I'm going to find the slope of the orange line. I'm going to use the fact that I'm looking for a perpendicular bisector to find the slope of the yellow line. And then I'm going to use point-slope form to find the equation. So let's get to get. Um, did somebody write down these points, please? Because i got to go to a new page. So somebody's got them? All right. That's right, sweet. Okay, so first thing is find the midpoint. So big M equals... So what was the first x value? Negative 3, and what was the next one? 5 all over 2, and what were the y's? 4 and 6. Okay, so what's negative 3 plus 5? 2. 2 divided by 2 is? Okay, so I got a 1. 4 plus 6 is? 10 divided by 2 is? Okay, so now I have my midpoint, right? Is everybody all right with that? So if I come back here and take a look, let me erase my scribble and make sure I'm right. Okay, at 1, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is my midpoint. So my perpendicular bisector has to pass through this point so it cuts the orange line, right, line AB, into two equal pieces. Is everybody okay with that part so far? Yes, no? Okay, now I have to find the slope of the orange line so I can find out what my slope has to be for the bisector. Okay. So calculate the slope. So how do I find slope again? What's the formula? Little m equals? Everybody all right with that? Yeah? All right, so plug in what I know. What was y2? 6 minus 4, right? All over 5 minus a negative 3. Right? Because those are my x's and my y's. So what's 6 minus 4? What happens to the double negative here? And what's 5 plus 3? Okay, 2 over 8. Can that reduce to what? Not 4, but 1 over 4, right? Okay, so if this is the slope of the orange line, and I want a line that is going to be perpendicular to it, I need the what of this? Opposite reciprocal. So what's the opposite of a positive? And what's the reciprocal of 1 fourth? Here is my slope. Here is a point. So now I'm going to use point-slope form to find my equation. Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1. Do you remember seeing this from last year? Yeah. Okay. I hope that's a yes. Most of you, right? This was Chapter 2. If it's not, you need to write it down, and it's called point-slope form. 
So we use this form whenever we have a point and a slope of a line, and this tells us what the equation of that line is going to be. So I plug in, what's my y value here for the point? 5. So I get y minus 5 equals, what's my slope? Negative 4 times x minus, what's my x value? 1. One. Everybody okay? Yes or no? Okay, so now I distribute on the right. I get y minus 5 equals negative 4x plus 4. Anybody have any questions so far? Okay, now what do I do to get y by itself? So what's my final equation? y equals negative 4x plus 9. And if I were to graph that line, it will pass right through 1, 5 and be perpendicular to the line they gave me. So this is the equation to the perpendicular bisector of the line they gave. Okay, so this is a pretty lengthy process. You've got to find a lot of stuff, but are there any questions on how to find it? Okay, what's up? Okay, um, so this is the slope of the original line here is one-fourth, right? And the line that I want has to be perpendicular to it. So what we know is that with perpendicular lines, their slopes are opposite reciprocals. So I take the slope of the line they gave me, and I have to change its sign, which is the opposite part, right? So if this is a positive, what's the opposite of positive? So I know it's negative. And then I take the fraction, and I want its reciprocal. So what's the reciprocal of one-fourth? That's all I'm doing, OK? But because I know that the lines have to be perpendicular, I know that the slopes will have that connection, where it's opposite reciprocal. All right, everybody good? OK, finding a missing coordinate. If I gave you this, and I want you to find y, anybody have any ideas as to where I'm going to start? Kind of. This is where the y is, right? But what's the d here? What's d stand for, you think? Distance. And what are they saying my distance is? Okay, so they're saying that the square root of 74 has to be equal to whatever my distance formula is, right? So that was, uh, did they give you 1 or 2 first? Did they have it written as x sub 2 minus x sub 1? I don't even remember. I, x sub 2 minus x sub 1? Okay. They really don't matter as long as you're consistent. There you go. All right, so they're saying that this has to be equal to that, right? And real quick, can you guys see the red on the green okay? Okay. Um, so let me plug in what I know. What's my x sub 2? 8, right? So I get 8 minus what's my x sub 1? 1 squared plus what's my y sub 2? 13, and what's my y sub 1? Just y. So remember, we can only solve for one letter at a time, right? So we've got square root of 74 equals square root. What's 8 minus 1 real quick? 7 and what's 7 squared? 49 plus 13 minus y squared. Okay. Now, can I do anything with this y as long as it's under the square root part? No. So how do I get rid of a square root? I square it. So if I square one side, I have to square the other side, right? What happens when you square a square root? They cancel. So 74 equals 49 plus 13 minus y squared. How do I get this piece by itself? Okay, so what's 74 minus 49? Uh, 25, right? Let me finish up. This is the last thing we got to do. Okay, how do I get rid of the square? Square root. Square root of 25 is? So I get plus or minus 5, right? equals 13 minus y, and then you would solve for y. So I'm going to add y and move these over. So y is equal to 13 plus or minus 5. That means that y is equal to 18, or y is equal to, what is that, 7? So either of those two answers should give me what I'm looking for. Okay? And the homework assignment will be posted up tonight. Uh, it's where we'll start tomorrow, okay? Uh, uh, what about that?